So as we get started today this video is divided into chapters. If you wanna skip at any point just look at the sliding bar underneath the plating window and you can see the chapters to skip ahead. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowdles. So those my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is the Spicy Crochet Pumpkins and these are not very big. They're three and a half inches tall after the stuffing has been applied. This thing when it gets done it looks like almost like a pop um, can holder but then once you start compressing it down it turns into this pumpkin. So it, ha it really kind of puffs right out. So for this you're going to need some stuffing. It does recommend some pellets in order to give it some weight but you can just use polyfill if you wish. And also I thought about, you need two different colors so you can see the colors that are there. I thought about using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre where I use the one color from the inside the ball, the other color from the outside. Make sure it's not the same color though. And so it would actually have the same kind of tinging and so you could use the two different uh, colors in that way as well. We are not cutting between each one of the rounds. We're gonna carry up on the inside and today I'm gonna get yourself started. So I already have a sample already partially made and so I'm gonna get yourself started. I'm gonna kick you off to do this whole section on your own and then I'll bring back the tutorial to finish it off and we'll do the stem and final touches. So we have two um, pieces of the pattern here. Um, these are really quite cute. Great for Halloween, possibly Thanksgiving and fall decor. So let's get started. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook. Recommending a Red Heart Super Saver and uh, we have some colors here. The carrot is the orange. Uh, we have buff which is this kind of uh, other color and then we have tea leaf if you'd like to do this. Where I live here in Nova Scotia it is huge. Pumpkins are just like everywhere out here. Um, it's naturally for the environment here and so we see every kind of variety of pumpkins including black pumpkins if you can imagine. So that's pretty cool and let's get ourselves started right now. So let's get ourselves started. We're going to create what is called as a magic circle. So what you need to do is that instead of doing the idea of the slip knot this way, we want to create the magic circle by laying the strand in your hand like this. And I want you to just use two fingers only. Now grab the strand and we have videos just for a magic circle and you're just gonna come over and when you turn your hand over I want you to cross it like this and then use a third finger to hold it. So you wanna create that crossing over motion. Let me show you again. So lay it in your hand. This is also called an adjustable ring. So and then use only two fingers. Rotate your hand and cross and then use your third finger, finger to hold it. Grab your crochet hook and you're going to go up underneath the first one. I'm holding. And you're going to scoop this one here. So just scoop it and pull through. And once you have it scooped up onto your hook, remove your fingers out but pinch it and you want to have the ring plus this straggler or the loose end on top. So when you go to crochet you're gonna crochet over top of these two strands and when we pull it shut it's gonna pull everything together and that's a magic circle and or a magic ring or an adjustable ring. Now before you close anything off we have to do our first round. So let's begin to do that first. So right in this open ring I need you to chain one and in there so going up over top of the two strands I want you to put in six single crochet. So we say one, two, three, four, five and six. So you can count it one, two, three, four, five, six. Before you do anything further I want you to take this strand here, the loose end and I want you to tug on it and it's gonna force it into a circle and you're gonna pull on it tight so that there's no open hole and you can do hats like this as well instead of doing a chain and doing a certain number. You can always substitute. Now I want you to slip stitch into the first one. If you're not sure it's the sixth one back. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Once you have this done you're not quite done. Magic circles, adjustable rings or um, the magic ring will fall out. So just pull this out and grabbing a tapestry needle turn it to the back side and put this straggler onto the tapestry needle. If you don't do this it'll come undone. Okay so we're still in the back and so you can see the direction from which I just came. So I wanna continue in the same direction 
and just staying on the back side just to go further. So I wanna go once and then back in going in the opposite direction. So when you turn it over you should never see it, right? Stay on this side. So that was the second time and you wanna do it three times in order for it to lock onto itself. So this is a great way to do any kind of openings on or any kind of uh, securing of ideas that go in circles like this. So you can always do hats like this. People message all the time. Can I use it? Absolutely. So once you go back and forth the total three times, cut it. That's out of your way and your magic ring is then permanent. Turn it back to the right side up and you're going to begin the second round using the same color. Let's begin round number two. So you're going to notice that the increase of this is very consistent with each other. So you're going to probably find this a lot easier than you realize. What I need you to do with the same color just chain up one and in the first one where you've done the join two in each end in, in that one plus in all of them I need you to single crochet, chain one and single crochet. That is the basic of this pumpkin is that stitch combination. So go to the next one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And keep doing that all the way around. You will have a total of six of these when you get all the way around. So can carry on, do that. I'm almost done. And this is my last one I believe going in. Make sure that you do have six. So I can count that one, two, three, four, five, and six. Here's the thing. We, we have to change our color. So you're going to just join it to the very first single crochet and you're gonna pull through as a slip stitch and you're gonna pull a loop and let that strand hold to the back side and we're gonna grab our second color. So don't fasten off, leave that on and we're gonna carry that up on the inside. So let's begin round number three. So what I want you to do is that I want you to create a, a slip knot. Don't keep this strand very long cause it, it'll get in your way. So keep it nice and short like this and you can trim it down if you have to but this will be on the inside of the pumpkin. I want you for round number three to come to the first chain one space. It's kinda tight. You will get used to seeing it though and you'll come into the very first chain one space and it's after the join and you're going to pull that through. So pull that onto your hook and you're going to pull that through to get ready to go for round number three. Once you're in you'll chain one and in this round here we are going to do an increase and the increase of this is very consistent and so let's begin to do that. So in the first one you've already chained one so you're going to single crochet and then chain one and single crochet. Okay, so there is that one there and so in the next one here is that we are going to do the exact same thing. So in the next one, the chain one space, we are going to do that twice into the same uh, chain one space. So you'll single crochet, chain one, single crochet but don't go on yet. Do it again one more time. So you're creating an increase so that this pumpkin can grow. So this one has two sets in there. So you have one set in there, two in there. So to continue the repeat all the way around you'll come to the next chain one space. So the next chain, chain one space only has one of that in there. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. You'll come to the next chain one space and then put the two sets in there like it was before. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet but do not move on yet. Do it one more time. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. Okay, so move on to the next one. So it's gonna be one in its in by itself. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and in the very last one that we have here it's going to be the two. The segments in there so it's gonna be the two sections. So we have single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then do it one more time. Don't capture any of this in behind into your work. 
So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And once you're all the way around, you need to join it to the very first one that you started with. This looks loose because it is and we'll pull that tight in a moment. So when you get all the way around, you should have one segment, two, one, two, one, and two. And you're just gonna slip stitch to the first one and you're gonna pull a loop. So pull it nice and tight, pull a loop, let it fall. And before you move on, I want you to come to the first chain one space which is right here. Insert your hook in and now grab the loop of the other color. Now it's gonna be a lot longer than you need it but just put it onto your hook like this and pull the strand going to the yarn ball. Like that. And pull it just enough so it can pull through and be ready to go. And we're gonna move on to round number four next. So in round number four, we're going to let the pumpkin rest. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna add in those segments, one into each one of the chain one spaces but we're not gonna put two segments into anything. So it's a nice easy round. So you're gonna chain one to get yourself started. Make sure that it has been pulled taut and inside the first chain one space, you're going to single crochet, chain one and single crochet and you'll do that into each one. But I wanna show you something. When you pull these part to see the single crochet, what's gonna happen is that you can sometimes see a strand that is not supposed to be there. And so if you just dive in for example and I just single crochet, you will notice that when you pull it apart, see how you got that strand that's right in there? That's not supposed to be there. It means that you've gone too far. So when you pull this apart, you should not see another strand beyond these first two. See that one right behind there? So when you go in, make sure that when you pull it apart that that strand is not captured into it. So it should be on this side, not the other. So you'll single crochet and chain one and single crochet. If you are gonna capture it in the incorrect spot, do it incorrectly for the whole thing because then it will look like it's, it belongs. So go to the next chain one space. So when you favor it in, favor it towards the back. So just kind of push it away from you to make sure that you can avoid that one strand that's out on its own. Do you see it? So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So what I want you to do for this entire round is this, just put one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into each chain one space and this will be your round number four. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming close to the end of that round. So I'm just putting one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet into each chain one space. Make sure this stays behind. Don't interfere with it and just join it to the very first single crochet that you started with. Pull through, pull it tight and then pull a loop and let it fall. Now that we've already joined this other color already, you're just gonna come into this chain one space, the next one and you're gonna just reach into the back side, turn it around and only grab that loop and, and just pull on the strand going to the ball just to pull it back taut. So if there's too much, you'll see that it's really sloppy when it comes out the front end but if there's not enough, just give it a little bit of a tug and make sure it's kind of taut in the back and now you're gonna focus on the other strand as we move to round number five. Now in round number five, last time we were in the orange, we had one segment by itself, then two and one and then two. So we're gonna be changing the number of segments this time. So we're gonna start with our first one. You'll chain one and you'll single crochet chain one, single crochet in the first one like you had been before. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. The next one, you're also going to single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Then the third one away is where you're going to put the two segments into the same one. So in the third one, you'll put in a single crochet, chain one, single crochet and then do that once more time in that same one to allow this pumpkin to grow. So you don't need to add water to grow this pumpkin, you just gotta add stitches. 
Okay, so now that we know this, so there's one by itself, two by itself, and then two segments into the third. So I'll just show you one more time. So the next one is gonna be one by itself. And then the next one is one by itself. And so the third one here is going to be two segments into the same one. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. And then do it one more time into the same one. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. I want you to do this all the way around. This is round number five. And so far, so good. So at the end of number five, the last one here has the two segments. So you have one two by itself, two, one two by itself, two, one two by itself, and then two. Join it to the first one, leaving this other color in behind. So you don't bring it to the good side yet. Join it and pull it tight. Pull on a loop and let it fall. Go into the first chain one space and then grab the other color, put it onto the hook, pull on it and pull through and now you're ready for the sixth round. In the sixth round it's just like the fourth and all we're going to do is just apply one segment into each. So your chain one at one single crochet chain one, one single crochet. And I need you to do that in each one of these chain one spaces. So don't forget that this one that has two, there's a chain one space here and here. Please do that all the way around. This is round number six. I'm coming up to the end of number six. So each chain one space got something. And then again, just let that color fall. And round number seven is coming up. So we're just going to join this here on the end of number six. Pull tight. Pull the loop, go to the first chain one space and grab the other color. And we're gonna be ready for round number seven. So in round number seven, last time we were, did one segment, one segment and then two into the same. So this one is slightly different. It's a bit bigger. So you're going to just chain up one and you will apply the first three on their own. So we have the single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So you have one and then you're gonna do the next one and then you'll do the third one. So there's three that are singles, single segments and then the fourth one is going to be the one that has the two segments in it. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and then do that one more time into the same one to allow it to grow a little bit bigger. Okay, so just remember there's one, two, three by itself and then two into the next one. Please do this all the way around. This is round number seven. So I'm finishing up round number seven and the very last one has the two in it and that's just a matter of keeping in the sequence of the, of the pattern. So the growth is now complete on this and you're going to just join it. And then we're going to then quickly review rows number eight all the way to 19. I would write that those numbers but let me just uh, switch out the yarn here and you're just gonna keep changing out the yarn colors as you go and we're gonna talk about eight all the way to 19 next. In rounds eight through 19 all you're going to do is that you're not gonna grow this out anymore. So like we had been before you're just gonna chain up one and you'll do one single crochet and chain one, one single crochet into each chain one space and you'll keep doing that all the way around. So there's no longer any growth. This is the entire perimeter so it's gonna get a little bit bigger in your hands but not much bigger and it's gonna resemble that pop can idea. If you see me reversing out it's because of that one strand that looks like it's out of place because I didn't go in the right spot. So what I need you to do is I would write down the numbers eight through 19 and as you complete each round just check it off that you completed it to keep yourself in se sequence and you're just applying this into each one of the chain one spaces and you'll notice that it will start to uh, grow it really quite lovely and that's where I'm gonna pick you up next time. So please do rounds number eight through 19. No more growth but just applying this into each one of the chain one spaces and changing the color between each round and making sure that you check it off on your list. I'll be back in a moment with the other sample as we carry on and I'll show you how to do the decrease when it comes to the other part of this tutorial. So let's review. We have now rounds number eight through 19 done 
in round number 20 we want to start a decrease. So we're now going to start narrowing off on the other side. Once we start stuffing this thing it will puff out and create that pumpkin shape. So you just gotta trust it. So in round number 20 we're going to do a decrease and watch how we're going to do it. So I've already pulled through the color so it's already ready to go and I'm just gonna chain up one and only apply one single crochet into the first one. Then move on. Chain one before you move on and then do the next one. This here single crochet, chain one and single crochet represents one of these. So we're actually just pulling those two so it will become together as one in the future. So going in here the next regular segment you're just going to single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and you're gonna do three of those in a row. So you got one and do it again and the next one and then finally the third time. So once you do it three times the next is right here. So single crochet in first, chain one and single crochet in the next and that will bridge that over like that. So that chain one space will be used in the future. Then come on over to the next space. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and keep doing that. So there's three of those in a row. And now, now that those three in a row you're gonna do the next space. Chain one, go to the next space and bridge it over and then you have three left before you get back to the regular uh, to the regular spot to the slip stitch. So just finish the final three. And when you finish the final three you're going to do what you already know. You're just gonna slip stitch it to the first single crochet only just to pull it over and you're gonna come into the space, this chain one space where these two are bridging and that's where you're going to pick up that other color and that's where you're gonna pull through so that you can start round number 21 and make sure you pull everything nice and taut before you begin and 21 is the same as number four. So let's quickly review. So 21 is the same as number four so each one of the chain one spaces is gonna get this segment. So chain one, one single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. So you just gotta treat these chain are uh, these single crochets that are by themselves as a segment. Okay so when you run into those again so you'll have one, two, three and there here is the two single crochets. So you'll go into that space and treat it as that. So let me just get you there just to prove that. And what this is doing is sequentially pulling everything together for you. So just keep an eye on those single crochets that are on their own. Okay, so there we go. You see it? So I wanna go into the space that's in between them. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and then keep on moving around. So please do that all the way around. This is round number 21. At the end of number 21 you're just gonna slip stitch to the very first single crochet that you started with. Pull everything tight and pull up a loop and come to this first chain one space and dive in there and grab that next color and pull that out and you'll start round number 22 in just a moment. And let's begin 22. Okay, 22 is the same as number 20. The difference is, is that there's different amount of segments. So when you start the first one, chain up one, you'll do one single crochet, chain one and then do the next one. So that, that would be the bridge that you'll concentrate next time and then you'll do the next two what you already know. So single crochet, chain one, one single crochet and then you'll do the next one the same way. And then the next one is the bridge over. So single crochet in the next space, chain one and then go to the next space after that. So that chain one that you just created is the bridge. So please do this all the way around. Just remember that there's two segments in a row and then the bridging uh, is created. Please do that around. I'll be back in a moment. Coming up to the end of number 22 and I'm just going to join it to the first single crochet. Pulling things tight. Come to the first space so it's where it's bridging and then grab that next one 
we're gonna be stuffing soon but not quite yet. And pull through and number 23 is the same as number 4. So essentially it's just doing the segments in each of that. So when you start the first one you'll chain up 1, do 1 single crochet, chain 1, 1 single crochet and then come to the next segment here. So just remember that the bridging is there. I really like the simplicity of this pattern. It looks so complicated but uh, when you break it down step by step it's actually really well thought out. So the designer did an amazing job with that. So there's only two in a row like that and then you have your bridge. Do you see it? So you're just gonna come in between and bridge it. And I want you to do that all the way around. This is round number 23. Once you're around on uh, number 23 you're gonna join it like you already know. Okay, pull up on a loop and then go to the first space in between which is the next. Pull up that other color and after this round that we're about to do um, we're going to put your stuffing in or start stuffing I guess you can say. So let's get that done and let's do round number 24. So let's do number 24. So we're just gonna chain up one and we're going to do a decrease again. So one single crochet in the first one, chain one and one single crochet in the next. So there's your bridge that you'll use next time and then the next segment is a regular one. So a single crochet, chain one, one single crochet. Okay, that's as easy as it gets. So you're going to single crochet the next chain one space chain one and bridge it over to the next one and then the next one is a regular segment. And I need you to do that for round number 24 and hopefully you got your stuffing ready because we're about to do that soon after this. So it's a single crochet, chain one to jump and then there's your last one there. So we're gonna put everything on pause now so just make sure you just join it and we want to begin to stuff this and create that iconic shape of a pumpkin. So pull your loops and we're gonna do that next. So it looks like a big potato at this point but we're going to fix it up. So the designer is recommending that you put some plastic pellets inside a thin bag and then just do that so that the plastic pellets don't fall out. I'm just gonna use polyfill. So I'm just gonna carefully just stuff this. I wanna be firm about it but I don't wanna be so firm that it's gonna be bleeding with stuffing if that's a terrible analogy. That's probably what it is. Uh, but you wanna be firm about it but you don't wanna be to the point where all this stuffing is blowing out between the stitches. So as you're gonna do this you're gonna notice that it's gonna start creating that shape but what we're going to do at the end of this is that we are going to create that iconic squat that a pumpkin will do and that's what we wanna do. So be firm about it but don't be too much pressure and I'll be back in a moment after I've got my a pumpkin. So I'm gonna leave you a little bit of stuffing advice. In time stitches actually relax. So if you stuff this relatively loose now what's gonna happen is that those stitches will relax and that it will uh, get even looser. So you wanna be intentional with your with the, the pressure but you wanna think about in the future that it will those stitches will open up a little bit more. So it's got a good bounce. Okay so you see that and so I'm now gonna continue into the 25th row now. So now I'm gonna go in between the two single crochets that are by themselves. It's that bridge and I'm going to pull up that carrot color there. So I'm keeping within the color sequence. And now this one here, this round is a nice easy round. Uh, pretty much, is this an easy level pattern? Yeah it is. So you're just gonna um, just chain up one and you're gonna single crochet two together over the next um, two. So it's gonna be this bridge. So just pull through and then go to the next chain one space here and going in and pull through and you have three loops, pull through all three. So it's gonna really pull it in. So come to the next bridge, pull through. It's technically not the right word but hopefully you understand and then come to the next segment one and put those two together. So it's really gonna pull everything nice in. It's okay so come to the next bridge 
and you can always reach through stitches to pull it out if you've overstuffed too. So just don't worry about that so much. So you're gonna put those together and what do I need to do next? So once I get all the way around I'm gonna do what I normally do and I'm going to join it to the very first one. So this is technically the end of the pumpkin. Okay, so I'm gonna fasten off. So we wanna use this color. So we're gonna create an extra long tail with this. So just be very generous about it and you're just gonna cut it from your yarn ball and we're gonna use that to create the shape. So just pull through. This is the top of your pumpkin. And now the other color that is just sitting there uh, on its own, we wanna get rid of that now and we want to move on and hide that in completely so it's completely done. So we're gonna use the fun color, the bright color to be able to make the lines that form the pumpkin. So what I need you to do with this other one here is that we need to get rid of it. So just trim like this and I'm just going to just grab this loop underneath the pumpkin and pull it through. So I wanna stay on the inside. We're going to apply a stem over, over this section anyway and I wanna put that through, that string, that strand through and that will help to lock onto itself. And what you can do then just reach into the side of the pumpkin somewhere and just pull that strand in to the pumpkin and then back out the other side. So just stay right in the top there. And pull through. And what you can do now where, where it's coming out, you can just safely cut that. And so that tail's gone. And now we're gonna put this tail onto the tapestry needle and force the squat and the shape to happen. So with that tail that we still have attached, I want you to put it onto a tapestry needle and we're gonna force this thing to squat. So we're going to uh, put the needle down through the center and if you have like rocks or anything that you have to go through, just make sure that you can get your needle all the way through in some way. And I want you to come all the way, so just squat it down so that that needle can pop out the other side. Don't stab yourself and just get to the close to the bottom. And there it is there. I may have overstepped this thing. So once you come out the bottom, pull on that strand and this will cause it to squat down on the front once you start pulling on it. Make sure you don't get any knots like that. That happens if your strand is too long. So just be patient with it. Okay. And then what I would recommend you do before you do anything else, come back up through the pumpkin. So just turn it over and come back up on the opposite side and go all the way back to the top. And let's get our squat established. So now the strand has gone down in. It's looping around the bottom and I'm just gonna pull it up. And when I pull on this, it's gonna pull the top down so give it, give it a bit of a push and it's also gonna pull it up on the bottom side. Now, there is a total of three, uh, sorry, a total of six section, uh, sections. So wrapping around, okay, just choose where you want it to go. So wrapping it around, go through the bottom and then back up through the top again. So I'm coming up through the bottom to the top and when I pull on this, I wanna pull on it intentionally so that this causes an indent on the side. Okay, and then come to the opposite side, go down and back up the bottom once again. The bottom to the top. Once it's back to the top here, you're gonna pull on that one and that's gonna pull that down. You don't have to be perfect, this is handmade so, and I'm not trying to give excuses but maybe I am. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna pull on it intentionally and, once, and then wrap it in a different direction. So you wanna see six pieces of that, of the pie. 
and, and if you only wanna do, uh, if you wanna do more, it's up to you. But that's kind of the intention. And then after all of this, we're going to do the final shaping of it and then also create a stem. So please do that and I'll be back in just a moment as we continue our journey. So I've now just did my six pieces of the pie and I'm on the top of the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna secure this strand in. This will be buried by the stem. So you can leave that tie on the top if you want to. And if somebody grabs it and turns it over to the bottom and you leave it at the bottom, somebody may see it. So you can pretty much get away with a lot up here. So tie it and secure it in and then take the strand of the yarn just take it through and just pop out somewhere and then just trim it for where it's popping out. So just trim it there. And now you can just take the pumpkin and just kind of squish things around. You can move strands if you have to and that's kind of what we have going on so far. And now I wanna apply the stem to this next. So let's create the stem and I need you to do that magic circle. I've already showed you that before or that magic ring. I call it a magic circle. And you wanna join it. So we're going to be doing this as a continuous round so you will need a stitch marker. That's why this strand is here. And you're going to start and do only four single crochets into there. So chain one after you've got it started and then put four single crochets in. So one, two, three, and four. Pull it tight and then join it to the first one. If you're not sure, just count it back. So one, two, three, four. And remember, if you do not secure that straggler in, you're gonna be in trouble. So just release that off and put this through a tapestry needle and secure it how many times? Back and forth. The answer is three. When I first started teaching crochet online, I was not doing that and uh, anyway, my tails kept falling out and I was quite upset about it. But then people would message, my tails are falling out and I had no idea why. So this is one of those techniques that I picked up uh, I think about a couple years after I started if you can imagine. So a friend actually showed me this and it was like, it was a game changer. And some people do this and they swear it comes out but I don't have any explanation for that. Okay so we're now going to then begin and I've joined it already to the first one just to make it easier for myself and it doesn't say to do that but I did it anyway. So I'm going to single crochet into the same one that I did the join and I'm gonna single crochet a total of two times. So we have one and two and before I go any further, the one that's before this, I wanna put that stitch marker in because that represents the ending stitch we're now gonna do a continuous round. So then in the next one you'll put in two single crochets. So one and two. And the next one is one and two. And the next one one and two. So one, two, three, Actually, I have this in the wrong one. It's right here. Okay, so there should have been four stitches that have this two single crochets in. Once you've done this, once you've done this one here, I want you to go and move that stitch marker up then to the last one you just created. Sorry if I'm confusing you. I think I'm confusing myself. <laughs> okay, so rounds number three, four, five, six, and seven. So off camera, I'll write those numbers down and I'm just going to apply one single crochet in each of the stitches. So as I move around and I create, and I get to that stitch marker, what I want to do is that I want to um, just move it up so, it, so that I can count it. I don't know why I'm stumbling on my words. My poor closed captioning team. Diane, I'm so sorry. <laughs> or Nancy. So once I get to the very last one, I wanna do it. And then I'm gonna move up the stitch marker so that I can count it. 
and then just check it off on my list. That was round number three. So please do it all the way to seven and maybe back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of number seven. So this is it. So you don't have to move up the stitch marker. I want you to cut a long enough strand so that you can sew that to the top of your pumpkin. And I also need you to grab a little bit of stuffing. So just pull that out so you can, it locks. Pull out your stitch marker. Grab a little bit of stuffing here. It's off to the camera. You want this to have a little bit of bounce back but not too crazy. And if you want your stem longer then you could have done that too. It's up to you. If it's too long it becomes a little bit of a, um, is that so right? <laughs> you know people can get all judgy and stuff. So just stuff it a bit and then put this onto a tapestry needle and we're going to attach that to the top of the pumpkin. So now just bring back your pumpkin and if you want to have it so it does do a purpose so don't put it in like this. Put it up on an angle like this and then just trace around the outside just grabbing into the pumpkin and then back out into the stem itself. So if you purposely kind of sew it so it's on an angle um, you don't have to worry about that happening and straightening up on you in the long term, right? So just follow the edge of the stem so that the stuffing is clearly on the inside. So once you've gone all the way around just secure it back and forth. You may wanna tie it into a knot somewhere and just go back and forth then to hide in the knot or to hide in the, the tail end and if you go back and forth three times it should never fall out on you. And then therefore that's done. So then just do your final shaping. Just kind of bend it over like that and this is a new holiday, holiday decor. You can pull it out year after year and use it as your accessories. The bottom actually looks pretty cool too and if you, if you think this is too much down what you can do is that if you just push the top down it will make the bottom puff back out a little bit and then sink down the top. So you can just shape it and do whatever you need to do in order to have your final look. And this here is a really cute pumpkin by Yarnspirations.com. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.